Hello, this is Nitin Dahad with EE Times. I'm speaking to Mark Wade, the, the co-founder and CEO. Mark, hello. Hello, Nitin. Thank you for coming. So, Mark, um, yeah, this is an exciting time at the moment uh, in terms of everybody's talking about AI, but you're servicing that market. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that's right. So we like to say that IR Labs is building an optical I.O. solution. And so what we mean by that is we're solving the data movement problem that's happening in high-performing SOC uh, products. So uh, the data movement problem has gotten so bad using electrical signaling that you're seeing a lot of, of Band-Aid solutions come into the market. Things like uh, retimers, things like uh, 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 very power-hungry DSPs going into optical transceivers, flyover cables, these kinds of things. And there's no market application that's experiencing the data movement problem more severely than what's happening in AI. And what you see happening in AI is that you really want to drive uh, really high throughput in the AI workload, but because AI models have gotten so big, and now you spread that model across a whole system, data movement in, in the efficiency of data movement in that system becomes paramount. So we solve that with, uh, with optical chiplets, to where we take the optical chip and we push it as close as possible to the to the uh, the core of the computer chip, and we do the electrical to optical conversion right next to the host SOC. So uh, we break that bandwidth distance bottleneck by saying, I'm going to convert to the optical domain coming straight out of the CPU or GPU or accelerator package. And, and that signal is converted to the optical domain already on the board before it gets to your chiplet. So uh, our chiplet goes uh, into the package sitting right next to a host SOC. Oh, okay. So uh, we're following the emerging chiplet paradigm where uh, things like UCIE, things like a number of packaging and assembly and advanced package capabilities are coming out to where uh, you can flip chip assemble our chiplet right next to a full reticle or multi-reticle host SOC. So the idea is to, to minimize the actual physical distance between uh, the digital electrical core and where the electrical to optical conversion happens on our chiplet. Okay. What are you showing uh, uh, at the booth? Yeah, so we're, we're demonstrating a few things here at our booth and we've got uh, some of our products standalone dem being demonstrated and because we're an optical chiplet that gets integrated into another customer's package, we also build reference designs that can serve as evaluation platforms for customers to uh, test our, our lasers, test our optical chiplets, they can experience the full bandwidth and performance in terms of energy efficiency, uh, latency, and, and overall performance of the solution in a standalone reference design. We're also showing work that we're doing with a number of partners. So uh, something that we're excited to talk about publicly is the work we've done with Intel in integrating these optical I.O. chiplets into a number of different SOC packages, and we're showcasing the, uh, the now Altera uh, FPGA with optical chiplets uh, uh, as part of our demo. And uh, we're showcasing work we've done with uh, both Corning and Ericsson, looking at how over time, it's not just the AI application that will need optical I.O. and, and is experiencing a, a data movement problem. You know, we look at this as a ubiquitous uh, physics-based problem that's happening in all high-speed connectivity. So as we look farther out, AI is going to be the beachhead application, but segments over time, including all the way out to beyond 5G and 6G telecommunications, will start to get re-architected uh, and, and will adopt th the kind of optical I.O. that we're showing in the booth today. For the optical I.O. solution that we're building, we have an optical I.O. chiplet and we have a laser. And as we were talking about, uh, we're one of the pioneers of building the so-called remote laser architecture. So what we did is we disaggregated the laser source from the rest of the optical communications. And uh, this allows you to just fiber connect in uh, uh, the optical, uh, the, uh, the, the laser light into the optical chiplet. Mm -hmm. So we think of it as an optical power supply. Just as you have some uh, uh, you know, AC-DC power supply sitting somewhere on the board powering up the whole chip, you now have uh, um, an optical power supply that powers up all the links. But what this buys you at the system level and how customers think about this is because you have a remote laser, it gives you flexibility on what kind of form factor and where you physically choose to integrate that laser. So the laser could be uh, a meter away from the optical chiplets, it could be uh, 50 meters, or 100 meters. So in the case of the radio head, it allows you to say, well, I'd like to put my lasers in the base station where they're easily field replaceable, and all of my uh, high bandwidth, high performing ASICs with optical I.O. are up maybe 100 meters away on the radio head. Uh, okay. So these kinds of architectures become possible uh, with, with what we're doing with uh, this overall optical I.O. solution. 
Okay, let's get back to let's get back to now. Um, give us some some figures. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll give you a few metrics in, in terms how we think about performance, and our products typically focus on bandwidth and bandwidth density, power efficiency, and uh, latency that can be achieved with the solution as well, and of course reach because we're in the optical domain. Yeah. So uh, on the bandwidth side, the chips that we're shipping right now in thousands of units uh, uh, achieve four terabits per second per chiplet. And that's an aggregate bandwidth, so transmit plus receive. So two terabits per second in each direction. Okay. And that's powered up by an eight wavelength laser. Um, now if you look at the roadmap, a few things are happening. One, different customers integrate a different number of chiplets per package. So we've got one f uh, four terabit per second uh, per chiplet, but a customer might integrate two, four, six of those chiplets per package to scale up the overall aggregate bandwidth of, of, a, of uh, how much bandwidth is escaping an SOC package. Now, uh, power efficiency is very important in what we're doing. And you, know, you have to start digging deep to actually get to apples to apples comparisons on power efficiency. But end to end, we look at uh, around a five picojoule per bit solution, um, and then another one to two picojoules per bit on the laser. So, uh, there is there is a difference in where this power is being burned, but the key thing is that um, that power efficiency leads to uh, dramatic improvements of overall system power efficiency because you don't have to go through any other components whenever you're going meters of distance. Mm. So uh, now native bit error rates, which gets a little bit in the weeds, but we achieve uh, this incredible bandwidth density and, and uh, overall bandwidth and throughput at native bit error rates that are better than 1 minus 12. Okay. And that unlocks a very simple and lightweight error correction architecture. And that's where uh, the, uh, uh, the really uh, um, compelling latencies come from. Because you do not need to have uh, over uh, very heavyweight error correction applied to these links. Okay. And now tell us a little bit about um, the, 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 the token uh, parameter. Because I think, yeah, uh, I think you, were, you said you've been at some various investor conferences and the question they're asking is not what they're asking at the technology conferences, which is about what value are you getting from the AI data centers. That's right. I've, I've been to a number of, of uh, higher level investor conferences recently, and one of the big topics happening there is the recognition that no one is making profits at the AI application level yet. And there's a number of reasons for that, and there's lots of debate happening as to how it might evolve. But at the core of it is the underlying hardware that drives the AI workload is not if cost efficient enough. So in these generative AI solutions, there's something called a token that gets generated. And maybe the easiest thing to think about is a chatbot. So a token here could be a fraction of a word or maybe a, a, a part of a couple of words. And the rate at which you can produce these, which would be referred to as tokens per second, this is at the core of drive, driving uh, efficiency and scale of the AI workload. So a lot of the conversation happening at uh, a higher level um, is looking at things like tokens per second per dollar per watt. And really this means what is the cost structure and the power efficiency of driving the, uh, the key figure of merit that's at the core of AI workloads. And a lot of the interest coming into IR Labs technology right now is that optical I.O. allows you to transform your system architecture and do things like build composable and well-balanced high-performance computers that drive incredible uh, um, improvements in this metric token per second per dollar per watt. Uh, so that's the high-level story of what's going on. And then as we look out in a few years in the future, we have to get to where there's economic productivity coming at the AI application level. So that means people are making money and it's producing ec economic value. Yeah. Whereas right now, it's not happening. So we have to move the uh, and drive efficiency in the throughput of these large AI systems uh, uh, to get there. So that, uh, in theory, uh, puts you at an advantage, and that's why the investors have invested in you, I guess. Yeah, I think I think what's being recognized is that AI connectivity is a different market segment. It's a new uh, and emerging market segment that drives different requirements, different performance metrics, and especially going into the high bandwidth domain of this uh, connectivity where you, you actually have GPU to GPU connectivity. Um, we're talking about a different class of requirements uh, in a new market. So I think that's the, the, uh, the investor class certainly recognizes this um, and we think that we've got a really exciting approach to how we, we bring tremendous value to that market.
Now, now you, you're with some customers already. What's what's happening over the next year or two? What what what's uh, what can we expect from IR Labs? Yeah, so uh, IR Labs is is a 130-person uh, late-stage startup at this point, mm -hmm. and we've had uh, a fantastic set of strategic investors and partnerships over the years. Uh, uh, Intel Capital, Global Foundries, Nvidia, Applied Materials, Hewlett Packard. So we've formed a really strong uh, set of uh, of of development partnerships in terms of how we think about bringing this whole solution to a volume market. So for us right now, as I mentioned, we're, last year we shipped on the order of 10,000 units and we're producing thousands of parts per month right now. This is really driving a validation and qualification cycle this year going into next year. And our customers in the market that we're addressing, uh, we're aiming towards uh, hitting volumes in the, let's say, late 26, 27, 28 timeframe that are ramping up into the many millions, tens of millions of parts. So think of us as, as in a uh, low volume validation and qualification cycle right now, really proving that we can build the foundation of a scalable commercial high volume manufacturing supply chain and go to market uh, 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 framework that gets to these tens of millions of units that, the, uh, that AI computing needs out in the 26, 27, 28 timeframe. And, and optical chiplets are the answer? Optical chiplets are one of the, uh, the key ingredients at the core of the AI system that's going to drive uh, uh, incredible improvements in, in throughput and cost efficiency and the scale at which you can, uh, you can build these systems and applications. Well, we'll be watching, see how that goes. So thank you, Mark, very much. Thank you so much.